We're live. We are live. We should enunciate our voices. Did I not enunciate? You were. Well, no, that, that isn't the term. Well, I'm sure we'll go over it later in the show with our wonderful guest. Yeah. Uh, project your voice. Pro- project. That's a big Was that a way to say volume? Yeah, sure. I'm not classically trained or co- collegiately trained <laughs> as you are. So I guess you could say I am, yeah. Or our guest that we'll be bringing on momentarily. <laughs> But hey, another Monday, another Lancaster Connects at 2 p.m. We're here on your social channels live every Monday, 2 p.m. Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. All on all on all the audio players. Almost like stumbled over that one. You're not even reading anything. I'm not. Yeah. On all the audio players the week after. So wherever you pick up podcasts, you can pick us up. And then, of course, on our website, LancasterConnects.com, you can check it out there. Figured we'd just uh, update a couple of goings on in and around Lancaster. It's May. It's May. 2024. Yeah. Seems like it's going to be a cooler May. Which well, I think, so far. Yeah. But I think we want that. Like, it's it not, feels not. like we've gone. I know as a motorcycle rider for years, I felt we've gone away from seasons. It's either cold or hot. Well, and that's what happened last weekend. It was like 55 on Saturday, like two weekends ago. And then it was like 85 the next day. Well, that Sunday, I mean, it was like shorts and sweat or yeah. pants and sweatshirts in the morning. And then yep. you're sweating and asking for the AC by three o'clock. That's right. Crazy. And then we were back to that this past weekend. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the run up, the smooth. You want you want an actual spring. Not that's what you're saying. Right. Not the up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, don't yeah. they say as as Pennsylvanians, it, you can complain about the weather 11 months of the year? Yeah, like it's it, something, it's like that. something like that. Yeah, we get second winter and third spring and <laughs> right. all that good right, stuff. Right, yeah. right, But uh but besides the weather, yeah, it's May, so we're we're grateful for that. We got Mother's Day around the corner. I do. So if you're a mom, happy early Mother's Day to you and all you do. Uh I want to give a shout out to my wife Stephanie, who's just been absolute rock solid for our family these last handful of weeks. We've got a lot of stuff going on, and I'll just say she's been Fantastic. And so if you have a fantastic wife, mom, uh, grandmother, aunt, who's ever been that motherly influence to you, make sure you appreciate the heck out of them this week. Um, anything to add for Mother's Day? Uh, nothing for Mother's Day. Go mom. So right. she's watching. That's right. Yeah. Um, Hi, mom. You know what else is around the corner? So a couple things, but like school is almost over. That's like right. our kids are starting to count down this, the end of school. We're like a month ish away oh yeah they're counting down for sure it's like i I mean i feel like they just started the school year yeah it's crazy so watch out for more kids out in the Mm -hmm. playgrounds and in the streets and zip around on scooters hopefully you're doing that safely with helmets and elbow pads i know it doesn't look good but we unfortunately you know ben was here i wasn't we unfortunately had an accident outside the store yeah with, a, with an actual motorcycle rider and you know, speeds aren't all that high out front of the store here on Plaza Boulevard, but anything can happen. So if you got a child riding around on those scooters and bikes, take their safety seriously and uh, keep your eyes open driving around too, because kids are excited. They're out there having fun. Pay attention to them, please. It's good PSA. Yeah, please, please. Let's all have a fun, safe summer. Speaking of safe, we've got this bridge coming down on Route 30. Big news. Big news here in Lancaster. That's how I use that bridge every day, to and from, to get here. This is it's like I know I know there's challenges already with this road project, right? The the whole Route 30, mm-hmm. 222 interchange. Like the moment they built it, it was absolutely right. Yeah, I I've, and I've been living it, living yes, north have, of Lancaster. Yeah. I don't know how you deal with it. I have I have I feel I feel if folks like me ought to get some sort of special bad or or better yet. We are our. We should have a discount card when we pump gas. Yeah, and, and you need your own lane and get. I, I would welcome my own hyper <laughs> hyper Jeff loop. Right, right. But no, the bridge, the one side of the bridge of going over Route 30 from 222 on and off. Mm-hmm. The one side's going to come down this weekend in the evenings. So they'll start. I believe it's like nine six, o'clock. Uh, yeah, nine to six a.m. or nine to six a.m. Route 30 is going to be closed, and you'll see there's detours to get you through the city on one way and then go Oregon Pike the other way, but uh, plan accordingly. But you can still get to the Park City area. You can still get to 830 Plaza Boulevard, 6.01 a.m. to 8.59 p.m. 
Come invest in a wonderful new mattress mm, this weekend. Nice segue. Maybe for mom. We have a massage pair <laughs> sale event yeah. going on. So if mom needs a little bit of a break, she's, uh, to quote Seinfeld, she's a little tired of you people and she wants to get away from all your problems. She can relax and recline in that massage chair. Mom could use a great set of sheets. Sheets, uh, pillows. pillows. Yep. Yeah. We just both said pillows in the same tone. Pillows. You see how we both just did that? That was fantastic. <laughs> Mind meld. That's what that's, that's what fourteen plus years will do. Yeah. So we've got some still have some some deals on the closeout stuff. That's gonna be wrapping up this week. So if you're looking for a deal, uh please do come out. 830 Plus Boulevard, Gardeners, Batches of More. We host this show for the benefit of our community. Uh so we had check it in, we had the bridge, we have Mother's Day, Memorial Day events kick off mm-hmm. tomorrow. Uh, so we'll update our website there. Um, it's always a wonderful time to invest in a new mattress. You know, we don't really make you wait for the big, big holidays. Uh, our vendors do really some specials, wonderful tempur savings coming up. That'll be back on our site tomorrow. Uh, the Lancaster ladies, uh, golf open. Did I say that right? Women's women's U S open women's U S open. big, big, big deal. I was there in 2015. Yes. It was fantastic. Uh, courtesy of Stuart, her, a, Local Lancaster institution. Right. His connection to Serta Mattress. We were had a Serta partnership at the time. Um, allowed that to happen, and it was fantastic event. And Lancaster knows how to put on a show mm. around golf. I mean, the best female golfers in the world will be competing there. Yeah. That's a that's a big big deal. It really is. So that'll be going on. So that's the end of this month, May twenty eighth to June second. Um, so check that out if you're able to. Certainly, um, certainly a fun experience. Going to bring a lot of uh, boost into the economy, which mm-hmm. is great. Mm-hmm. We love that for everybody here in Lancaster. So check that out. Yeah. A lot of cool things going on in May. Yeah, it is. But I want to get into, I'm going to kind of, normally I feel like I do the talking on this show. Right. <laughs> <Ben's> like, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna let Ben lead this one because Ben's got a real great connection with our guests. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of follow yeah, this one. Yeah, so we'll marvel at all that's gonna happen. Yeah, right. So we're gonna bring Scott Drackley on from the Penn Square Opera. Now Scott and I don't know each other until just a little bit ago on our pre-show here. And I can't wait to get to know Scott a little bit better. Um but you know, we found out in the pre-show Scott and I have a few mutual connections to other people. So Scott, welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you for being here. Yeah. So, so, Scott, yeah, it was pretty cool. Like, uh, I think I've shared it on the show before that I have a music degree, a uh, music education degree from Millersville University, go MU. Um, and some of my professors, uh, I was a voice major and I had uh, some professors that you know, Mr. Walter Absolutely. Blackburn, um, great dude. And uh, my man, Buddy James, uh, who no longer a Lancaster native, he lives out in California, but you knew, you knew both of those guys. I did and worked with both of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, they, they were instrumental in, in, in my college experience. Of course, I don't, I don't do music anymore. Um, really never did it after college, but, um, I had a wonderful experience at Millersville and, and the fact that I'm not teaching has nothing to do with those two men or the program. It was, uh, more of a decision that I made, uh, for myself, but, um, you know, mattresses, not, mattresses got a hold. Yeah. They just, they just they took just hold and, and took, bringing the end of this bit off. Yeah. But it, I thought it was really cool that, you know, those guys, cause like I said, they, they meant a lot to me and, and my college experience. And you can still use your voice, even though you're not, uh, earning your, uh, keep by it. That's right. Still always sing. That's right. You know, so um, I do sing in the car, you know, so I, I, I do that. And and actually uh, over Easter, uh, I sang in our church choir. Oh, yeah. So that was that was kind of fun. Um, I hadn't I really sung on stage in a long time. So um, it was cool to, you know, get back in that routine of, uh, you know, preparing the voice and practicing and then, you know, performing. So it, it's kind of something I've missed over the years, but it was it was cool to do that. So. So, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to learn more about the Penn Square Opera because really I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, but first I'd like to know maybe a little bit of your history with the opera. Uh, kind of what drew, what drew you into opera and how long you've been uh, singing opera. And, uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Okay. Actually, I'm not a singer. 
Oh, I'm a okay. pian- I'm a I'm a pianist. All right, uh, but uh, I always loved opera. Uh, the uh, very first opera I saw when I was hmm, about thirteen or fourteen went up to the New York City Opera and saw an opera called Lucia de Lammermoor, and it just happened to star the very famous American soprano Beverly Sills. Uh, watched it and I was hooked, and so I enjoyed it. I went to college. Uh, majored in music uh, with a performance degree in piano. Then when I went to graduate school, uh, I, I started to work with singers as, as, as a vocal coach and accompanist. And uh, that's how I got involved in the opera world. I married a singer. Uh, I have two kids who are singers, one who was a professional uh, opera singer. Uh, and so uh, I worked with, in opera for over 40 years uh, in many capacities as an accompanist, as a coach, as a conductor, as a director, and now I'm running a company. So it's, it's been all part of my life. That's so, really, really cool. So you are a vocal teacher, but you're not a singer. I'm a vocal coach. Vocal coach. Okay. A vocal coach does not work, does not like Buddy taught you how to sing. Sure. Technically how to sing. I don't do that. A vocal coach works on languages, works on interpretation, okay. works on character, uh, everything else to do with the voice. But I just don't teach people to sing. My wife does that. Uh, gotcha. She is a, a voice teacher, a uh, fantastic voice teacher. And uh, so hmm. she's she's uh, the one that, the, that knows the technique aspect. Gotcha. So we, we're going to have you sing, but we're, we're not going to do that. Again. No, you're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you and your uh, wife are... and. and one of our fans of the show, Randy, uh, tuning in, talking about his fa- his first opera was Madame Butterfly. Yes, yeah, he said that up to him. Yeah, so and that's how that's how I met my wife was that we were in college and she needed an accompanist and she came up to me and said, "Would you play piano for me in the next recital?" I said, "Sure," and doing it ever since. That's right. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're the two of you are quite the dynamic duo then. Well, <laughs> she she teaches people how to sing. She she's she's excellent at it. And then I, you know, I do all sorts of other things. I I play for singers. I as I said, I conduct. I direct. I do everything. So very cool. So how did how did uh, Penn Square Opera come to be? You said uh, uh, when did it start, and uh, you know how it came about, and and your your kind of beginnings with it. So it started in 2016. Uh, my son as I said, is a professional opera singer. And after he was finished with college, he started uh, going to what they call young artist programs. And he was hired by Utah Festival Opera. And he was hired as a young artist. And he sang in the chorus and he covered understudied roles and sang in community concerts. And the next year, they asked him back to do a major role. So uh, my wife and I went to see him. And uh, it's it's in Logan, Utah, which is in northern Utah, absolutely beautiful area. And um, the town was very crowded with lots of people coming to this festival. So we literally sat at a coffee shop for about four hours. And Peter said, Dad, with your knowledge of opera, you can do this. Young artists need a place to sing. They need a place to hone their craft, mm. to make connections. Uh, to put stuff on their resume that they performed a role. Uh, and so I went home and did research for about a year. And uh, then I thought, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do it right. So, you know, I got a lawyer. I did the whole incorporation thing, the whole 501c3 and and started the company uh, and started very small, uh, just getting the, the community aware of, of what I was doing. Uh, so it has several different elements I think are very important. Uh, number one, as uh, a retired teacher, I was a uh, choral director at Lancaster Catholic High School for 25 years. So I'm very, very committed uh, to education. Uh, and so that's just part of all of our family. Uh, then there's uh, the opportunity uh, to give to these singers uh, a chance to perform, a chance to learn, chance to make the connections. And finally, to give back to our community, because I saw how so many places gave Peter great opportunity to perform and really gave him encouragement and a leg up. And and so I decided, well, this is a way for 
my wife and I to give back and give back to the Lancaster community. Lancaster community has a huge arts uh, connection. There's there's theater, there's symphony, there's 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 so much. Yeah, that's how that's how that's how the whole thing got started by going out to Utah uh, to see a performance. And a cool story. Interestingly enough, one of our suppliers here has their offices in Logan, Utah. So, yeah, it's so beautiful up there. <laughs> yeah, just beautiful. Yeah. So tell us about uh, you. You mentioned when you started that you wanted to do it right, and you you said the words five hundred one c three. Yes. And so yeah, we, tell us about the charitable are, aspect, nonprofit aspect yeah. of what you do. We, we're a nonprofit. Uh, in fact, pretty much any performing arts organization is a nonprofit. Lancaster Symphony, the mm-hmm. Folk, uh, Prima Theater, uh, EPAC, we're, we're all nonprofits. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that makes it so people can donate to us and donations are very important, uh, to the life of an artistic organization. Uh, we can then, uh, apply for grants. There are certain grants that we can apply for uh, as as a five hundred one c three. That doesn't mean you know we're nonprofit. That doesn't mean we can lose money all the time because we can't. But we have we have to file taxes just like right. every organization. You know we don't pay taxes, but we have to file. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to keep everything current with very good records, and uh, because everything's completely public. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, it's um, and we have to renew our uh, through the state. You have to renew once a year uh, the ability to ask for donations. Uh, so that's how a five hundred one c three works. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good way of of doing business. So a couple questions then. Uh, where where are you located? Well, all over the place. Okay. Uh, we perform all over the place. We have performed at the wonderful new Gardner Theater of Lancaster Country Day School. Mm. We've performed at Telus 360, which I love performing there. It's such a great place. Uh, we are going to be performing this fall at um, the West Arts Center that just opened recently. Okay. Uh, so um, we, we perform many different places and we, we do small production. We do small little concerts in people's homes. Uh, oh, wow. We do larger performances. Uh, so um, I have an office uh, here, uh, but, you know, performances are all over the place. Gotcha. And so what, what services do you offer at Penn Square Opera? Okay, well, uh, we, we, we present... Uh, productions and concerts. Okay. Uh, and, uh, like in, uh, this month, uh, next week on the 19th, we are presenting a performance called Voices and Sacred Song. Uh, and this, this came about because there are a lot of very, very talented singers locally who are not doing this as a career. They're not. They have other things that they do, but they still love to sing. So, we are doing this as um, a way to highlight these wonderful uh, local singers, uh, and some of them have had a career, or you know, and and some of them are are working on that. Uh, and we're presenting it uh, free as a thank you to the community for all mm-hmm. their support. So it's a concert with of all sacred music, all types of sacred music, uh, oratorio, just any. Anything, I, I left it up to the singers. I, I, I engaged the singers and I said, what do you know? What would you like to sing? And they, they've given me a list of pieces they would like to sing. And I'm making a program out of that. And it's going to be a very exciting program because these singers are incredibly talented. So that's the next thing that's coming up. Uh, we do concerts. I do also run the Penn Square Music Conservatory. And that got started... In 2020, uh, yeah, I opened a conservatory in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, a rough time to start. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and it came about because uh, there used to be in Lancaster, the Lancaster Conservatory of Music. And my wife taught there. Mm-hmm. And so she heard, so when the pandemic hit, they they decided to close down. Mm-hmm. And so she had heard, she, she participated in a, a phone call with, with the faculty and stuff. And so... I thought there's this facility because I've been to the Lancaster Conservatory and seen the facility. So why not start something? 
So we decided I, I approached the owner of the building and he was thrilled to have another organ, another arts organization in there and the fact that I could just move in. So we started the conservatory and in the fall, in September of 2020, everything was online. They were all Zoom lessons mm-hmm. uh, and that lasted for a little less than a year. Uh, then we started to have people uh, come for for lessons. Uh, we offer lessons uh, on pretty much every instrument, voice, piano, uh, and we offer them for all ages. We have kids as little as three and four taking Suzuki pi- violin, as well as I think there's a voice student here who's in her 80s. Uh, mm, so it's wow. like if you just want to study music, if you just want to get better on your instrument, uh, then... Come take lessons. So, uh, it's, it's, it's fun and it's been growing steadily. Uh, and, uh, so it's, it's, I've got a wonderful, tremendous faculty. They are so, such a talented, uh, performers. They perform in the area as well as they are incredible educators, uh, on, on their instruments. So I'm very fortunate to have gotten some wonderful teachers. Uh, to teach here. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's a piano lesson going on right now. Okay. Yeah, uh, no. Next door. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so a, a couple of things as I, as I'm just kind of listening in here, cause I feel you guys are going to really connect with Ben's history and obviously Scott, your expertise, but first and foremost, it's great that there's a place where music and voice lessons serve as a hub with the conservatory, because to me, kind of outside looking at it, it seems like, I mean, I recall as a kid and a teenager, even a young adult, there were tons of people offering music lessons. It seems there's less of that today. So it's nice to know that we have this right here in our backyard. Um, There are still teachers out there. There are. Uh, There have unfortunately been cuts in public school music programs over the past... 10, 15 years, which has been very unfortunate. Like uh, uh, in one school district, it, you, they used to start uh, lessons, instrumental lessons at fourth grade, and they moved that up to fifth grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a year <laughs> less of lessons. Uh, I'm not going to give a, a big lecture on the on the importance of music education because it, it's huge. It's right. huge. Uh, it, it teaches so many uh, skills uh, that... so. Kids are not avail- not being given the opportunity in the schools as much as they used to uh, to study, uh, and no, very very few schools offer piano lessons at all or voice lessons at all. Mm-hmm. They offer instrumental, and some provide string lessons. Some school dist- districts don't. So this is a chance for you to come and take lessons here, uh, and I I. Yeah, very good. Encourage, highly encourage them to participate in their school music programs. Uh, we do three recitals a year, which are great fun uh, to have the kids show up and the parents and grandparents. Everybody shows up and they, there's more flowers you can shake a stick at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's great, <laughs> great fun for the kids to get out there and perform. Uh, they're learning a skill. Uh, by taking lessons when you're little, you're learning a skill. You're learning a discipline that you're going to take that say, you know, a six or seven year old starting piano, I, I think I'd only require them to practice for like 15 minutes a day. You're not going to ask a lot of time. And you know, it builds up as they get older and able to do more. But you're, you're definitely teaching them a discipline uh, that they can take into other areas of their life. Yep. Uh, so, um, and eventually, uh, as you start to get better, you get to participate uh, in, in group activities, which is where the real fun is. Uh, participating in group activities, uh, in your school choir, in your band, in your orchestra, uh, wherever. Uh, just get out there and play and have fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I used well, to say, I used to say, when I was teaching, uh, I used to say to my kids, my kids, my students, uh, I'm not trying to create uh, the next uh, great a virtuoso pianist, singer, whatever. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to instill a love of music. Mm-hmm. And uh, then that you can take that love and you can use it throughout your entire life. Because I always say, after your knees are done and you can't play basketball anymore, 
you can still play your violin, you can still play your guitar, you can still sing, you can do whatever. So I'm looking at you and I'm saying you need to start singing again a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's at me. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. It's like you need to start singing. And I was great you're, that you sang with your church choir at Easter. That's wonderful. You're one hundred percent correct. That's a start. Yeah. 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 I, I love that the conservatory is like kind of a one stop shop. Um you know, for anybody looking for for any sort of music lesson, you have it all kind of under under one roof there. Um, the only thing we don't offer is percussion because that mm. takes up a lot of room. Sure, I, I that, but we, uh, any other instrument we we have. Now, where where is the conservatory? The conservatory is on uh, 940 Marshall Avenue. Uh, okay, the blocks from Lancaster Catholic High School. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that new. Uh, the, the old silk mill that's being yeah. re, um, done into apartments and such. We're right across the street from that. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great. And the, the teachers that are there, um, the, uh, are they kind of like independent contractors? They are. are. They are. Okay. They yeah. are independent. Yeah. They are independent contractors. They are paid, uh, per, per lesson they teach. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and they're used to that because, you know, they're, 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 they're teaching probably also in their home, I would think. Okay, some of yep. them are. Uh, and then some of them are playing in the area. And uh, they might play for the Fulton, they might play for the Symphony, and they might be, uh, or Allegro, or they they might be independent contractors for all them also. That's really, really cool. I love it. You, you had mentioned uh, a little bit ago in our time together, your show on the 19th, your event. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was Voices in Sacred Song. Right. Do I have that right? Yep. So you said you have a really exciting program planned. What is it about what the artists and performers and singers are bringing their selections that make it exciting for you? What well, do you like and bring out? Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are choosing pieces that they know and that they have performed. Mm -hmm. And so they have a special meaning to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know... Sacred music, uh, it's there to lift us up. It is there to praise God. It is there. Uh, and so it's a gift. It is, it is a gift. So, uh, each of these singers brings their own gift and they've chosen music that they know that means something to them. Uh, so they can communicate that gift then to the Lancaster audience. Uh, this is why this is the whole thing about a, a, a gift about, uh, we're offering it free. Uh, we'll take an offering, uh, but uh, we're, we're offering this. Everybody is, is donating their time. Uh, and uh, so it's, uh, they're just incredibly talented local singers. And you're going to hear all different styles, all different styles of sacred music, because there are all different styles of sacred music. So uh, that's the, one of the really neat things. It's just not just going to be one type of music. It's, it's many different types. I, I thought it was cool when Chris was scrolling through the uh, people that are going to be, I think there were maybe eight individuals. Uh, the age range is, looks like it covers like everybody. It's yeah. Um, yes, it does. Uh, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it is. It's great there. And I know most of them. There were a couple that I, uh, that I have become acquainted with, uh, but I know most of the people that stand. So I, I knew to ask them uh, one of them, uh, Mark Namoli, uh, was my student at Lancaster Catholic. Oh, that's cool. And now he is, now he's the choral director at Lebanon High School. Uh, Neat. so yeah, I'm kind of proud of that. Right that's there. really cool. Yeah, that student. has to be, tell us a little bit more about that. Like that, you're obviously your commitment to education through the lens and the skills and the talents of music and, and singing and instruments. But what's it like for you to run into former students who you inspired? Maybe I share a story or two. Uh, I have, you know, I have several students who are working uh, professionally in music. Uh, and uh, that's really great. And I keep in touch with them. Uh, but I think what gives me the greatest joy is when I hear from a student who said, Boy, I remember chorus in high school. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Or I remember singing in, in the musical and it was so much fun. Uh, that's the stuff I remember. And it's like, I was at Lancaster Catholic long enough that I actually had a child of a student 
uh, that I had. <laughs> nice. I had them at the beginning of my career and then I had their children at the end of the career. So, uh, but th- I think that's what gives me the greatest pleasure is to know someone who says, I can't or at my church. Uh, I still play the piano uh, at home for my kids, uh, you know, or, or I still play my clarinet somewhere. Uh, so it's, it's that, uh, uh, that, that gives me the greatest joy. The, the ones that are the professionals, that's great. And I'm <clears throat> so proud of them. Uh, yeah. and, and, uh, them I, I keep very much in, in touch with. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's the ones, as I said, I don't, I don't, I never train kids to be a professional musician. I train kids. I hope to give them a love of music mm-hmm. that they could take throughout their life. Yeah. So our friend of the show and, and we've made, friendship outside because of our show here uh diana bolo from swan for kids are you aware oh of- she's yes i've met her yes she's it's incredible incredible yeah uh, thing she does yeah so she she i mean that for her that's the whole payoff of her organization is uh getting these children um interested in music and really connecting to the opportunity of something positive and it's it's a safe place, yeah, and and in a world where they don't have many safe places, yep. So it's incredible what she, the work that she does. Yeah, she has a big event coming up in July, and um, uh, because of our connection, uh, I believe I believe she has some state representation coming as Good well. Fantastic. Uh, because of our connection and uh, some things that I was able to do and, and to focus on arts programming in schools and, and things like that with another uh, state rep that's passionate about it. I feel arts organizations should work together because we all, well, to be quite honest, we're all looking at the same pie as far as funding. Mm-hmm. We're all looking, at, we all have the same thing that we want is to present something to the public, uh, either theater, dance. Uh, there are ballet companies in Lancaster, uh, uh, music, uh, anything like that. We should all be working together because we're, we all have the same goal. We really yeah. do. Uh, and so I think that's vitally important uh, that arts organizations get a chance to share things. I have worked with the uh, Guy McIntosh and the Lancaster Symphony, uh, and they really do an incredible job in taking education out to students uh, in schools and have mm. students come to performances. I, whenever I do a performance, I always offer free tickets. Uh, actually, it's not even free tickets; just come to the the final dress rehearsal. And I had this the last offer we did, Barbara Seville, last fall. We had kids from uh, Columbia High School come. And because she was a student of mine also, the choral director there at Columbia High School was a student of mine, and I contacted her, and she brought like 15 kids, and they loved it. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. When we did, in the spring of 2023, we did the opera Sanctuary Road, which was about uh, William Still, who was an abolitionist in Philadelphia, and very active in the Underground Railroad. And we know that the Underground Railroad went through Lancaster, and so we worked with Lancaster History right. and we presented this opera. We had uh, the composer here and the librettist here for the performance. And we had a talk beforehand with two experts on the Underground Railroad. Um, so we did two public performances, but we also did a school performance. And we had a curriculum written by four incredibly talented <laughs> retired educators who got together with me. And I just basically sat there and let them talk because they were they were so good at at, at at the subject that they wrote a cu- curriculum that went to the, to the schools. We had 500 kids practically filled the Gardner uh, auditorium oh. coming to see uh, Sanctuary Road, which is a short opera. So it was for a first introduction. It was a good one. And they had a talk back afterwards. So they learned music. They learned opera. They learned uh, about the uh, Underground Railroad, which I thought was one of the greatest things we did. That's really, uh, really cool. Giving a chance for these kids to see this, see see this opera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to your point of all the different music and arts programs working together, uh, I mean, what a great point. Um, because maybe maybe a kid doesn't quite connect to an instrument, but they connect to the composition. They connect to 
the stage instruction or the support. They connect mm-hmm. to the all the other aspects that go into what's happening on stage. Maybe they just aren't that that person to be front and center, but they're they can pull the ropes behind the scenes, push sure. the buttons. I mean, I say that figuratively and literally. Our producer, our wonderful Chris Stone from Cast Ahead, who produces all of our shows, he made a career in music, but he wasn't he wasn't necessarily up there on stage recording albums. He was behind the scenes at Sony Music pushing the albums and mm-hmm. and getting making mm-hmm. sure all the artists got all the support they needed. And I think we can lose sight of that. I talk with my son often about what his football career can look like. And maybe it ends on Sunday afternoons on an NFL field. But it might also end on an NFL field on the sidelines coaching. You know, or mm-hmm. on Saturdays for college. And, you know, we I think too often we try to push people into the spotlight of things and miss opportunities for all the things that are around it. So it's great that you think of it as let's all work together because we just might expose kids to something really great that they never thought they'd have interest in. When I, um, when I was a Catholic high, I uh, directed and sometimes I conducted the string musical and I loved the crew. The crew was great and they were just, they were building the set. They were, painting the set, they were changing the set around and everything like that. And by the time the show came on, they knew every word of the show. They could sing every single uh, song with the show and they would be backstage sometimes doing that. Uh, but they didn't want to be on stage. Uh, but they were part of something. Yeah. Uh, part of something uh, big. Uh, so uh, when I did Sanctuary Road, I had some wonderful uh, adults and college kids singing in the chorus. And same way with Barbara Seville. It was a small chorus of just men, but they were all local people. Uh, actually, one guy came up from Philadelphia area to sing in the chorus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's, 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 there's so many things you can do in music and not be the one standing in the spotlight singing the big aria. That's really cool. Scott, you've got a fan, um, Jonna Hoover, Jonna Hoover Green. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He says hello. And uh, yes. she says you have a talented family. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott, I want to know if if somebody's interested in performing with um, Penn Square Opera or taking lessons, what what is their best best path to connect with you? Well, if you want to take lessons through the conservatory, you get on our website, yep, and uh, you can submit something there, uh, information, uh, and we ask all sorts of questions: age, you know, mm-hmm. have they had any experience, you know, what are they interested in studying, and then I contact them and we get them set up lessons so that you do that through our website perfect um when i do uh a performance uh like a a full opera um the leads are pretty much are going to be these young young professionals and so i may audition i have auditioned several times in new york uh which is great fun uh you go up there for two or three days and every five minutes someone new walks in uh and sings sings for me uh, and then I advertise for chorus when I need a chorus, uh, uh, in, uh, <laughs> just online. Uh, and I would like to, um, the bigger shows that have big choruses also have bigger budgets. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's, you have to be able to choose things that we can afford to do, uh, that we can, we think, you know, people will come to. And uh, then, you know, that's that's how we, we cast accordingly. Oh, that's Smaller cool. Smaller roles will be probably local people. And that's that's great. And that's that's how pretty much most opera companies in the United States work. Mm. They're going to have the larger roles are going to be professionals. And as I said, we use young professionals, people who are just starting out in their career. When we did Barbara Seville, the oldest person in the cast was 35. Mm. Uh, and they're for, from like mid twenties to mid thirties. Yep. Uh, but, and then you use local people for towns with local people for smaller roles. And then you have chorus also, which all of which are very, very important. Everybody's important. What's, what's the biggest opera? I mean, like a uh, amount of people on stage that you've produced right here in Lancaster. Uh, I've done mainly small things okay. because, uh, because we're just still starting out. I mean, yeah. you know, seven, eight years is still pretty young. 
Okay. Yep. So I've just done smaller things. Uh, as I said, we had a chorus for Sanctuary Road. We had a chorus for uh, Barbara wow. Seville. That's the first time I did anything with chorus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a start. That's uh, great. Got to start somewhere. Well, and, you know, kudos to you for the fortitude to, to go through the last four years, specifically going back two years and two years prior, you know, not easy. Yeah. And and you, the dream and the joy could have easily been like, well, maybe this just wasn't meant to be, but kudos for you for for plugging ahead and and sticking to the dream of it all that's great getting getting through the pandemic was very hard for all arts organizations Mm -hmm. yeah uh we did something uh uh, an online presentation with the lancaster symphony to uh they they had some uh performers some players and they they recorded it remotely and i had some singers and we did some things and recorded them remotely uh but there was not much you could do uh, and so it's taken a while to slowly come out of that. Uh, and it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, but you know, hopefully, you know, things are going to get better uh, right. and they are getting better. Yeah. But, so as we look to, uh, wrap up our time, um, we often talk with our guests and how they can get support from our community. And we talk about time, talent, and treasure. And so, Time being volunteering time, and so yes. we'll have you. We'll have you fill in the blank there on if people are able to volunteer with you. How does that happen? Uh, their talents. Obviously, we talked about how that happens. You know, if you want lessons, you go to PA or I'm sorry, Penn Square Music Conservatory uh, uh, dot com for lessons. But if you have talent and you want to get on stage, Scott already talked through that part of things, and then obviously treasure. And we'll talk about where they can donate. So let's talk about that time and treasure, the time and the money, monetary donations aspect. Time, uh, I'm always looking for uh, people who are willing to do some work, uh, someone who might want to be on the board, who might have some connections uh, and uh, or want to do a specific job on the board. Uh, I'm always looking for something like that. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have an incredibly dedicated uh volunteer treasurer uh and uh so but you know if if you want to consider something like that or consider helping out with any aspects of a production uh that that uh needs to be done um there's there's always something right uh to do when we're in the midst of a production yeah yeah, we op- we often talk with our guests and, and let the community know you. Know, hey, yeah, every every nonprofit, every charity can always use the money. Um, you'll always put it to good use, right? It's it's. I'm sure you've never had a point where you've said, "Oh no, no, we have too much money here. Take it back," <laughs> right? I don't know what that is. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but the time thing, you've you always need an extra pair of hands. I can pretty much gather, right? Like there's sure. always that opportunity. And so, so yes, if you have time, please, please consider if you're connected to what Penn Square Opera is doing and you have that time, please consider connect with them, pensquareopera.com. Donating, we have had some donation links on the screen and, and just share with people where, where do some of those donations go? They can go towards many things. You can donate in the conservatory. You can sponsor a student. Uh, cool. And uh, so, uh, because there's always uh, kids out there who would love to con- continue playing and they just don't have uh, the the wherewithal to do it. And so if we can help out with that, uh, so there's there's that. That's the big thing with the conservatory. With the, with the uh, opera company, uh, it would go towards... Uh, some, some people have donated towards a specific project and some people have donated just generally to the welfare of the company. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, even when we're not in productions, we have some overheads that we have to pay for right. uh, that, that are always there uh, with any arts organization. And uh, but, you know, if you want to say, hey, you know, I like this idea of what you're doing with uh, with this production, you know, uh, I like to donate towards that. And uh, that's greatly appreciated. Every donation is greatly appreciated. That's great. I, l- I love the the sponsor student item because, yep. yeah, there, there's people that might not be able to afford, but uh, really want to have that that sort of education. So that that's really, really cool. I I, I kind of want to help with lessons. I know that there are organizations like like um, 
music for everyone and the symphony and uh, uh, the other one you mentioned that they're helping students get actual instruments. Right. So yep. there are other organizations <laughs> in Lancaster who are helping with that. I want to see if, if, if a student needs lessons. Yep. And, uh, and, you know, most students start off at their elementary school. And that's not to put any of those teachers down because they're wonderful teachers. But you know what? There may be a kid uh, starting flute and his band director was a trumpet major in college. Now he's learned how to teach flute, but they've got to some, become uh, to a point where you want to study with someone who's actually a flutist. Yep. So that's where I want to see if we can help with students and say, hey, you, you got a good start in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Yeah. Now let's have you work with someone who really knows the instrument very well that's great. and can take you to that next step. Well, and it probably, again, to your comment about we're all we're all sitting down at the table looking at the same pie, but if we can all look to multiply the pies at the table and work together, that's great. So that child that does get that instrument, maybe through music for everyone, and you know, playing it for a couple of years, but then does lose connection because they didn't have more focused lessons, that's that doesn't necessarily further the goal of people that donate instruments. We want instruments to get played and to have those skills grow and those skills take them through middle school and high school because maybe that keeps them out of trouble. Maybe maybe it just keeps them connected, a part of something special where they belong. And that's always a good I will, thing. I will tell you one thing, uh, one story. Uh, uh, I had a student uh, and she played viola and she's like, Mr. Drackley, why should I continue this? I said, are you kidding me? You play viola. That's gold. And she went to Kutztown University as an English major on a full scholarship to play viola in the in the orchestra. Yeah. And that there was another student who went to Lebanon Valley on full scholarship for clarinet. She wasn't a music major either. Yeah. So I always say, especially guys, I said that, you know, audition. You sing in my chorus now, audition in college and see if you can get a scholarship because there's yeah. money out there. That's cool. For things like that. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Hey, Scott, um, I want to know, uh, so you know, we've got Penn Square uh, Opera, we've got the Penn Square uh, Music Conservatory. What's next for these organizations, you know, the rest of 2024, 2025 and beyond? Do you have any big goals or dreams that you're you're shooting for down the road? I want to uh, double the uh, enrollment at the conservatory. Mm. I want to double that. That's and awesome. I'm going to be out there talking to the music teachers and saying, here we are. Uh, in case you didn't know who, that we were here. Uh, so I want to do that. Uh, with the the opera company, we are working on our season for next season uh, to help uh, expand our demographic and uh, bring people in who may have never been to anything like this before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had that happen where 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 people have come to a performance and they've never been to an opera before and they've come to even when it, we don't do a full opera we just do some sort of concert and they say hey this was really great we want to expand our demographic i want to get kids in to see performances mm -hmm. uh and uh, that's that's hard to get kids out of school to see a performance uh because one of the big things is the cost of transportation transporting sure. kids so when we did Sanctuary Road and we did that performance for 500 kids, we paid for the busing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. So the school district didn't have to. That was part of uh, a grant that we got <laughs> was to, to pay for that. I would like to see kids to experience uh, this. Oh, every every arts organization wants that. Fulton does. Symphony does. Everybody does. Uh, we, you want to get, because they're the next audience. They're the next mm -hmm. ones who, who give to the company. They're the next ones who participate in the company, uh, doing any any sorts of things. Yeah. So getting young people here to see performances is important. Uh, and also expand our whole demographic to uh, bring in people who are like in their 30s and 40s, who may not think, you know, opera's not for me. Yeah, it is. Opera's for everybody. You've seen an opera before. Everybody see you've both seen an opera before. You ever see Les Mis? You ever see Evita? You ever see Jesus Christ Superstar? Mm -hmm. They're all operas because it's all sung. Yep, yep. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, you know, opera does get a bad rap. I will agree and say, you know, that it's always boring. It's like, no, it's not. It's incredibly exciting. Uh, and the stories are really, uh, enthralling and, 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 uh, 
can uh, really get you involved. So it's fun. And it's, and not everybody dies in opera. <laughs> I, I can feel Scott's passion coming yeah, through. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Scott, this has been a joy to have you on the show here. Appreciate Thank you, you taking very much. the time I really out. Appreciate it. Though. Yeah. Yeah. PennSquareOpera.com, uh, PennSquareMusicConservatory.com. Please consider uh, supporting these two wonderful organizations. Help Scott on his goal to double that enrollment. Uh, they're at the conservatory for lessons for these young students who are picking up an instrument for that first time. If you remember that joy you had, you learn, you know, learn how to play a first song on piano or guitar or hitting those notes on the flute. Uh, I was going to say if you wanted to be a flautist, but that is not the right term, I guess. It's flutist. I'm, or maybe I, maybe I'm mixing it's it either all one. Up. Either, either one. one. If you're playing the instrument, that's what matters. And if you found joy in that and can donate to uh, the conservatory to help get more lessons, uh, available for kids, that would be just awesome. Transfer that joy into that support. We use Penn Square Music Conservatory.com slash support would be the place to do that. Penn Square Opera.com slash support dash us would be the place to donate there. Sunday, May 29th. They've got a wonderful 19th. show. 19th. What did I say? 29th. My goodness. And it's right on the screen. <laughs> Sunday, May 29th. May 19th. <laughs> Why don't you do it's it? It's just like cooking it in your brain. Why don't you do it? Yeah, yeah. Voices in Sacred Song <laughs> is Sunday, May 19th, 2024, mm -hmm. at 4 o'clock at the First United Methodist Church. And that's at 29 East Walnut Street, Lancaster, PA. And it's uh, free to the public, which is really, really cool. And, uh, you know, free will offering uh, will be uh, will be taken there. So uh, definitely, I mean, with all Scott shared, I mean, it'd be really cool to attend that and see that. Yeah. Scott, do you have time for a few more questions for you? Sure. All right. So got our connection cocktail here. There's no drinks. There's no drinks, but... Yeah. Um, so we, we feel like I need a drink after little, that flub. A little bit, a uh, uh, little bit of time to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, we've talked a lot about the opera, but I want to know: Do you have a favorite opera to direct, or that you've been involved mm. in? Mm. Might be a tough question. I know. Yeah, there's so many that I like. Uh, I like the comedies. Comedies are fun. Okay. That's why I had such a blast with Barbara Seville because okay. it's a comedy, and the people were so talented. And they came in and it was memorized. They had it memorized and they were just, they kept adding suggestions and stuff. And they just, they made it so much fun. The comedies I enjoy. That's cool. Doing a lot. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so aside from opera, any other passions that you might have? Love garden. Oh, okay. garden. Very cool. Is that flowers, vegetables? Flowers and vegetables. So yeah. Mix them over. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very so good. I do enjoy Very that. Cool. All right. Cool. So, um, Live in Lancaster, you've got, um, and of course, you know, a Penn Square, right? Penn Square Opera, Penn Square Conservatory. You got your, your stuff downtown and you've got, uh, the rural area, the beautiful Lancaster countryside. Do you prefer, are you more of a city guy or are you, uh, are you a rural countryside guy? Well, I've lived in both. I lived in Lancaster City for 16 years, something like yeah. that. And, uh, now I live in Ronx and, uh, it's it's beautiful out there. Countryside, yeah, it is countryside. It's 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 wonderful out there. Uh, it's very quiet. Uh, sure. So when I'm outside, I uh, don't hear anything. You don't. Hear. So it's 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 wonderful. That's one of the great things about Lancaster County. And, yeah, you know, one hundred percent. See the city, and then you know, in five to ten minutes, you're suddenly out in the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's yep. That's great. I love Lancaster it. in a nutshell. Yep. One hundred percent. Scott, thank you for the time today. We really appreciate you. you. We appreciate all you're doing for our community. Thank you for bringing opera to Lancaster. We appreciate you. Looks like we've had that just in time. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how technology can work. That's that. right. That's, That's right. right. All right. Um, so I guess that leaves our sleep better tip. Yeah. And, and, a, and our a testimonial. Testimonial from our customers. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So sleep better tip that I have is uh, about sleep hygiene. And this was... Um, we're not talking about toothbrushing. We're not talking brushing. about toothbrushing, yeah. no. Which uh, I'll say I, di I did it opposite. 
I, I did it wrong last night and I've, I felt, I, I mean, you know, I was going through the conversation that we had, I put the toothpaste on and then I realized I didn't put the water on and it was, it felt completely wrong, but I still had to brush my teeth like that. If you're wondering what the heck we're talking about, <laughs> there's, there'd been intense debate here on the show about <clears throat> when you brush your teeth, if you put the water on the brush first and then the toothpaste mm -hmm. or toothpaste on and then the water. No. And you're saying you did the first. I, I did it. I put the I put the toothpaste on and then the water, and it was completely backwards. I, I felt like I should start over. I didn't, but I noticed I was doing Brushing it wrong. Brushing teeth all wrong, man. <laughs> and I had a certified dental hygienist tell me as such. Where was the certification from? Packer Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. Uh, but my tip was on sleep hygiene, and this is all about the environment in which you sleep. So it's not about brushing your teeth mm, gotcha, gotcha. or anything. It's not about taking a shower before bed. It's about the light in the room, the scent in the room, the mm. temperature in the room, uh, the UV light you expose yourself to. But specifically, well, I wanted to share this tip. There's nothing more. I'm kind of like, I've shared on the show. I'm like, I like to hunt and then drop my truck and kind of like this closet redneck type of guy. But... <laughs> I do have to say, I am kind of bougie. Oh. If I could have a brand new pillowcase every night, I would take it. Like, Last night, as in like washed or like just uh, like new, brand, new, like brand new every wow, night. Okay. Like it would be like with my green M and M's over here, huh. and somebody pampering my fingernails over there. Yeah, fresh pillowcase every night. But last night we had um, the trifecta, fresh. Well. Our, the quad factor. Okay. Fresh protector, laundered sheets, pillowcases, and the throw blanket that I sleep with. Uh, and it was, uh, just, it was all cuddly and snuggled up. It was fantastic. And I slept good. And uh, so sleep hygiene matters. And it can really just kind of plus that wonderful new mattress you might get from us or the one that you love and have. You can just refresh the whole experience. And um, yes, you should launder all that stuff regularly. But if you just are really dying for a good night's sleep, you might just throw that stuff in the wash real quick and to improve the sleep hygiene. So we'll send you that tip and many more in our sleep better book. Love that. All right. So uh, testimonial time for Gardner's Mattress and more right here on Plaza Boulevard, right behind Park City Mall. Uh, had a friend of mine come in last Tuesday and buy a mattress. You have friends? Uh, I do have friends. And his name is Justin. <laughs> and he left us a very good review. Uh, he said the staff is authentic, fun, and truly care for your needs. This is a significant purchase for our family. And so it means everything to have a team that carries the same weight and care on our behalf. I thought that was a cool way to say it because, you know, we do care. Um, but it was cool that he put that in words, you know, like, uh, it was the, the help he got, uh, was authentic and the, the appreciation for their, time shopping and money spent was returned by us. So um, thank you, Justin, for coming in and making your purchase. And, uh, you know, it's on order and we'll deliver it soon when it's in. So thanks for leaving us a review as well. Love it. All right. That was a good show. It's a great show. We appreciate Scott Drackley from Penn Square Opera and Penn Square Music Conservatory dot com there on both of them. Check out all that he's doing doing wonderful work here for Lancaster, for its people, for the students who want to learn music and really participate in something great. Mm -hmm. So thank you to Scott and uh, thank you to you, Lancaster County. We'll see you next week on Lancaster Connects. Take care. Mm -hmm.